The Stepmother, It's a Family Affair, 1972. This is a Crown International picture, which was one of the main companies for releasing a lot of these exploitation, action, suspense, murder mysteries. And that's exactly what you get from the opening credits here. This movie, The Stepmother, you know, in the 2000s when they started re-releasing all these on DVD, this is one of the ones featured on a lot of the sets. So if you look out there, you could find it on a disc with like seven or eight other drive through theaters. But they don't set it up uh, grindhouse style on the DVD that I got. Actually, I rented it from Mammoth Video. So I haven't looked over the DVD case thoroughly. But anyway, this is one featured in a lot of the trailers of the Grindhouse that they show. And I'm sure it was played over and over again and it's the epitome almost that they show in the trailer of what these films really were. The stepmother. There's always seduction and murder and betrayal and usually drugs and okay, let's get into it. I'm going to introduce the players here. So it's a Southern California setting. Opening scene before the credits even finish rolling. There's already a rape, a murder, a cover-up by Barry. He buries the body of the sea. This guy, our lead character, um, Frank, I think it is. I forget his name. He's an architect. He's... He comes home late one night after a business meeting and his wife was having an affair with a client that he was building the house for. But he didn't actually see it, but he kills him in the driveway and he goes and he buries it with a spade shovel. Coincidentally, a Mexican couple are at the beach arguing that night, so a domestic abuse happens, which actually turns out to be a strangulation death. And... So that's a coincidence right in the same spot. So the po police initially try to pin it on this Mexican guy who killed his wife. Or, yeah, killed his girlfriend for cheating on him. And But he's like, I don't know the other guy. I don't know Mr. Allen. And the guy who got killed was, was a rich guy, obviously, because he was building a beach house. He was getting a beach house built for him from this architect. Anyway... Um, yeah, they really lacked, I'm just going to give some general overall thoughts on this. So it goes off into that, he kills that, and then there's this hard-nosed investigator. He's probably the best actor of the whole movie. He starts fishing around the group. It's kind of like a posse of friends, how they all know each other. And his wife is the redhead that you might see in the trailers of this movie. And... She's an okay actress, but they really don't elaborate on a lot of the sex scenes like some of the other Crown International Pictures movies do. They kind of keep it going with the suspense. But here's the thing. There really is no mystery to the whole thing. The investigator is just trying to unravel it more. And then what ends up happening is the guy, Frank, the architect, he's extremely religious, so... He snapped when he saw his wife cheating on him, and he wouldn't even sleep with his wife after that until later in the movie, of course. And he sticks true to his vows, and he doesn't, and there comes an instance where his business partner accidentally dies. He falls off a, one of their buildings, the terrace of one of their buildings that hasn't been completed. But Frank's the one who actually shoved him. But he didn't mean to kill him, you know. So now he's wanted for two murders. Then that guy's wife, his partner, she, his wife starts hitting on him, of course. But he doesn't partake in her advances of seduction and wooing him. Instead, he just kind of stresses out and gets more anxiety. And the, and the investigator digs deeper. And when he finally gets the evidence is the spade shovel. That's the one that plays key in this. In the trailer and everything. The spade shovel was owned by his gardeners. I guess I'm giving spoilers and just talking through it. I don't know. I mean, I guess you're along the ride if you're going for this. Anyway. Like, there really is no mystery, like I'm saying. Like... And then what really kicks in, what they really try to uh, 
say is the main plot of this whole thing is his son who comes home from Mexico. The wife seduces him. He's a total mute, docile, shy, sheepish, whatever adjective you want to use for him, you know. He's innocent. He's only like 19 or 20 and she seduces him and re and he and he does her reluctantly. And then his dad goes on a business trip so they like go out to the cabin and she seduces him again. And then the dad shows up at the cabin obviously and the investigator shows up and he knows that the spade is his shovel. And he's like, goes to arrest him, you know, and the dad's just in shock, like, how could you do this to me, son? And then the cop just shows up, a cop we've never even seen before in uniform, he just shows up with the investigator, and he gets out, and he's like, he's got a gun, and he just shoots him. Because the dad, our main character, Frank, is handing his son the, the murder weapon to take care of, to get to dispose. Actually, that really doesn't make sense now. Even though he was like, I'm pretty much going to turn myself in because he knows he was caught. Anyway, it could have been more exploitative. They didn't show that much sex. And they skim skimmed over some sex scenes and just cut to the end. And then they did this weird freeze frame throughout. But, um, still a lot of good scenery and locations that they filmed that in the 70s if you like Southern California who the knows anyway that's pretty much all my let me see if yeah yeah that's all I have on my notes so tune in next week for another review or in the future I release them on Saturdays I give it a C minus